was asked to do a TEDx Broadway talk, I was elated because I always secretly fantasize about doing one. And I had a rush of emotions, a rush of emotions. They were excitement, fear. I was humbled. I was honored. All of these emotions came to through my skin in sort of like a, a rush. But then what it settled on was just terror because the way my brain works is I'm, I kind of like go all over the place, sort of like a ping pong ball. My brain just hops all over the place. And every TEDx Broadway talk that I've seen has been very succinct and everyone has a clear point of view and they know exactly what they're trying to communicate. I, on the other hand, have this great idea that if I were ever able to do a TEDx Broadway talk, it would be on resilience, the ability to overcome an obstacle with, with mental toughness and bounce back from a difficult situation. So I had already had my idea of what I was gonna talk about. How was I gonna communicate that to you? Now that was the trick. So I'll start with the fact that um, throughout my life, I've been described as being someone who is rather resilient. People often ask me, LaChance, how did you overcome an obstacle or two? For instance, one of the um, tragedies in my life is that um, I'm a 9-11 widow. I survived um, giving birth to a daughter um, after 9-11. I was eight months pregnant when the towers fell and we lost her father. She is now a sophomore in college and thriving beautifully. I was also the mother of a one and a half year old at the time. And she is also now thriving, living her life. Actually, she chose this profession. She's working in theater as well. But my children aside, Surviving the loss of their father was devastating. Not having the parent, the, the co-parent there with me to help raise these daughters at a difficult time. But I found a way to survive that and I was resilient. Another example, not long thereafter, I wanna say about five years later, I met a gentleman and decided to marry again for the second time. It was not a good marriage and it ended seven years later. Then I had to pick myself up from the bootstraps again. Now I'm not only a divorcee, I'm also a widow. So here we are working on that resilience again, how to come through all of that. And on top of everything, I'm an actor. So this is where my life is proving resilience all the time. Actors are told no more than we're told anything else, any creative person for that matter. We take this creative energy in our minds and we try to find a way to live it through in our lives and get paid for it. That's the hard part because oftentimes whoever is producing or directing, whoever is hiring on the other side of that table may not see your apple as the apple that they need for their fruit salad. They may want an orange and you're an apple. That's common. So we as, as creative beings, we have to pick ourselves up and keep moving forward given those obstacles. As a Black woman, as a Black actor, I've been told oftentimes in my career that um, you're just not Black enough, LaChance, or we need you to be a little bit more urban is the word. Oh, that's a buzzword. That's a buzzword. Don't ever call a black person urban. Just don't, just stay away from that. <laughs> but um, I had to figure out how to deal in an industry where who I am was being defined for me. And the resilience that it takes to bounce back from someone that is not of my race telling me what my race should be is very challenging. I was fortunate enough though to have an opportunity to create roles that have now been revived on Broadway. Um, three of the roles that I've created in earlier in my career have now been a part of revivals. And while that's wonderful and, and something that I could sit back on and be proud of, um, it is also, it was not without struggle. It was not without realizing that um, this industry isn't always designed for those of us that are creative to be resilient, but that is something that we always have to lean back on. So fast forward to 2020, here we are. 
And you have this person who understands what resilience is, who who's, who has experienced all of these uh, obstacles. And I now am faced with COVID. COVID hit my family pretty hard. My father was in a coma for 47 days. He is now out and, and recuperating, but his life has changed. We lost an aunt to COVID. We lost a dear family friend. Um, and people say, as a society, we have to overcome, we have to bounce back. It's important that we're able to move into, um, get or move forward or, or get back to normal. And the truth is, there is no normal that we're getting back to. What I've learned in this time is that the resilience that I need to move forward daily is not a picking myself up by the bootstraps and just going for it. It's in the being and not the doing. Doing is what I think as a society we're focused on. We are constantly moving forward. We are constantly finding ways to keep ourselves busy and keep ourselves active. And what COVID did is it stopped us. It stopped me, it stopped all of us from moving forward. We had to sit and be with ourselves, not by ourselves, with ourselves. And in that being, we've discovered a lot about ourselves. We've discovered that, hey, you know, maybe I do require an extra hour of sleep. Or maybe that book that I've been trying to read on that I've kept on my shelf is not as interesting as I thought it would be. But what we've learned, are, we've learned about ourselves, we've learned about our spouses, we've learned about our family, our friends. We've learned how to exist in this very strange reality. But what has helped me, what I've been able to fall back on to keep me feeling resilient is in the being and not the doing. I've stopped doing as much as I used to do. I've stopped worrying about responding to emails as often. Yes, I'm pretty bad with email, I know. But it's the being that we need to remember to do. We wake up in the mornings and we are thankful. I will start every morning thanking our creator for another day. Another day to get up and be and not do. Now, some days I do wish I had more to do than others. But when, that, when those days come, I remember that this is my battery being recharged in the being and being able to experience where we are right now in each moment. And that is the value. And that is what charges and recharges my resilience to keep moving forward. So let's be and stop doing as much. That's it.